I can run that conduit and cable which will come here to supply power for this light. The moment has come to connect some battery power to the system. What I'm going to do is put an extra bit of plywood as a backing plate I always had that little guy on the shoulder whispering in my ear saying, you can't build a boat. Well, on to the electrical. There were quite a few people who were asking with the prior video, aren't I meant to be allowing for running electrical, running conduit, running cable? Yeah, you're right, of course. So I've already made a bit of a start with the planning with the electrical, running cable and running some conduit. For those who remember, with a prior video, I did already get all that wiring for the windlass up in the bow and also the main electrical supply for not only the V-berth, but that will actually be running through this main bulkhead between the saloon and the V-berth into the saloon area here to provide some power for lights and fans. So there's not really anything going where I've already put that lovely lining. On the edge here, just near this hole that you can see here, which is actually pipe for the door aid, which we'll get to another time, but just near that, I'm going to be having a light fitting. I've already drilled through the framing and the beams in order to run the cable into the V-berth where the main supply will be. That's all painted and ready to go. I've just had this one hole to bore through this bulkhead, which I've just done. So after some epoxy coating on that, I can run that conduit and cable into the V-berth, which will come here to supply power for this light. And then the last thing to explain at this point in time is regarding the cables that will be coming down the mast that need to make their way back to that distribution panel. What I've decided to do with that is when you look at sailing boats, one of the most problematical areas for running cable and power is upper mast to the top. And so I've decided I want to leave that cable externally in the event that A, I need to attend to some cable that might have corroded, or B, that I change things along the way. I'll just make a nice little box section. I already have, you might be able to see here, this bit of pipe coming down through the deck into the saloon area. So the cables will be able to come down through there and then along this heavy mast beam. And on this side of the beam, I'll just have a nice section that'll conceal those cables, but that I'll be able to take apart and it will give me easy access to getting at them. Well, well, the moment has come to connect some battery power to the system. Nervous? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, excited because obviously getting some power running through the electrical systems so that I can connect things up and have power running through them is a pretty momentous occasion, right? So what I need to do 
now that I've got that solar panel fixed in place where I can trickle some charge to get some charge into this battery once it's connected, I will need to get the solar wiring in place. And this circuit breaker switch sort of doubles as a circuit breaker and switch, which is pretty handy. I'll get that mounted just on the other side of the DC-DC charger. I'll need to make some connections with this wiring for that and then get the cables connected to the battery. Definitely a moment of truth here, connecting up the battery for the first time, hoping that everything is all right. <laughs> So with these light fittings, what I'm going to do is put an extra bit of plywood as a backing plate on the upper side of all of that lining. The reason being that the Western Red Cedar being a very soft wood is not exactly the best timber to fasten something to it that you could count on staying in place over the years. So what I'll do is I'll just cut out little bits of marine plywood, 12 mil, and just place those above the Western Red Cedar, so I can go through that Western Red Cedar and into the plywood. I've got three different size light fittings here. This dual light with the day and night lighting, so that will go here in the saloon. That's got one size. I've got two of these really slimline lights, one for the V-berth and one for the heads. And then I've got these smaller ones with their own built-in switch. So that's good because I'm going to be having those right through the galley area and there's five of those so you'll be able to decide whether you want one, two or all five on at once. And of course they're all LED lights so very very low power draw. If you want 
wanna keep this fire. Right, eh? Well, I've got the backing plate made up, all epoxy coated, two coats all around to protect all of that, in particular the edges, light fitting, cable with its conduit. And so now what I need to do is get the backing plate fixed to this bit of lining here where the light will go, which I'll just use some Fix 15 for. And then that light fitting, number one, can be screwed in. Also, just to make mention of the fact that the lithium battery, the lithium house battery, has been ordered and I'm waiting for it. Like so many things around the world, we're all experiencing delivery delays. So it's on its way and I'm hoping that it'll be here in the next week or two. Well, I've stopped myself in my own tracks regarding the lining. This has been playing on my mind for a while, actually. I'm ready to just finish off this lining forward of the mast pillar in the saloon area here, but 
I do think that if I get those installed, I'm probably gonna have to just take them down again when it comes to getting this bulkhead painted and at the least undercoated. And so I have made the decision to stop with that lining and just get this bulkhead prepared and undercoated and possibly painted as well. So that once I put that lining in, it can just stay there. So this involves filling up a little bit of damage actually. For those who remember, when the water tanks went in on both sides, it was a bit of a struggle. And so this bulkhead on the port side here did get a little bit banged up. It's not much, it's probably only half a millimeter of a depression in certain areas because this marine ply is pretty damn hard. However, if I don't fill those in, especially in the right sort of light, you will see those depressions and I think it'll look tacky. It's the same for the other bulkhead in the galley there that separates the saloon and the galley. So it's only a couple of small bits there, but I'll do that as well. And I just think that will be a smart idea to get those done. And as I say, so that when that lining goes in, it just stays there. I've got a story that I do want to share ahead in a bit more detail. Suffice to say that when I was in the build stage, doing all the still work for Mistress, I had almost daily, especially at the end of the days, when I was looking at not only what I'd done, but how much there was to go, I always had that little guy on the shoulder whispering in my ear saying, you can't build a boat. I can't say it used to bother me or I used to pay much mind to it actually. I made a decision to kind of ignore it. But over the months that this just kept going on in my ear, I came up with an answer and it absolutely shut this little dude up on my shoulder. And I used to respond by saying, you're right, I can't build a boat. And you know what I used to follow it up with? But I can wake up and do that next one little job. Man, did that get me out of trouble and also keep me out of depressive moods actually. So people, if you too are taking on big, big projects, whatever they be, whether they be relationships, or building something, or a job change, career change, I'm gonna encourage you, just remember, you might not be able to do the whole thing that is involved, but just try and have a think about whether, if you can just wake up and do that little thing that you need to do to get you to the end of that day. So there we go people, another episode of Good Boat Work and I hope perhaps a helpful life story in the next episode. Well today is makeover day for Mistress. Can I ask you to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and please check out my website and of course leave a comment because I like reading what you have to say.